I have two sons. One is 19 and one is 12 years old. They inherited their grandmother's house. My two sons inherited a house from their grandmother. The house is subject to a lifetime estate reserved from my wife. The executor, my wife's sister, is trying to settle the estate without Oh, wife's sister. Oh, yeah, I think I had it right. So okay. the aunt is like the aunt of the kids. Yeah, the aunt is the in charge of the estate. Yeah, and apparently she's greedy and don't want to spend money. So what the aunt needs to do, <laughs> so presumably the aunt had the will admitted in the probate already, which it sounds like she did. The aunt needs to execute a deed saying from grandmother's estate to grandchildren with the life reservation for the wife. Gotcha. Um, by the, the, the questioner's wife. Um, and then the wife has full use of the property during her lifetime. Since the grandchildren seem like they're minors, she needs to outlive. She needs to make sure she lives long enough for those kids to become adults or becomes a clusterfuck. Um, yeah. let's, so, say, let's say it doesn't happen. Let's say she gets by a bus while the kids are under 18. Yeah, then one the kid's ki 12. Then the kids have to have a conservatorship appointed for them to manage the property and what for is that? them. It's a court-appointed um, person who can essentially pr protect the money for the kids until the kids turn 18 and then they get handed everything. Protects and that would also be true kids. of the real estate. Okay. Um, it's a huge pain. And right now, since she's since house got left, to, even with the kids, since the kids are only 12 still, they couldn't sell the property if they wanted to because they're not old enough to contract yet. Um, so we're, this property... It was badly okay. This is a bad estate plan. <laughs> it was bad. It was not good. Um, what she should have done is set up a trust. The trust would get would make the wife the beneficiary for her lifetime, and would have an appointed person to manage the property if the wife died, and would eventually deed the property to the grandkids upon them achieving a certain age. Because nonetheless, what this the worst case scenario of this is that the wife dies and the kids at age 18 get the property. You have an 18 year old who owns property. They are not gonna be a very good property owner. They will probably be terrible at it. And if they sell it, you have an 18 year old with money from the sales of the property and 18 year olds are dumb with money. Like some aren't, but if you show me an 18 year old's good with money, I'm you're showing me like a unicorn. Yeah, you're, you're showing me like a fairly rare <laughs> event. Like I, at age 18, thought I would make savvy decisions. I mean, I was probably not bad with money. Nonetheless, I would have done dumb things. It would have been a bad idea. These are all... And then she left with an aunt who seems to be not... in not wanting to hire counsel yeah. to do what could be a very tricky situation. This was badly done, <laughs> and she should feel bad about herself from the grave for having done this bad estate plan. Um, and I hope that this could be rectified because it requires the aunt to write the deed correctly. And if she doesn't write the deed correctly, she's going to mess up the title and one day when they try to sell the property, the closing attorney is going to be like, this property cannot get title insurance because we have to go back and correct the deed. So, fun. If this woman does nothing, she needs to hire a real estate closing attorney. It will cost her like 200 bucks. Just write the correct deed to does all these things. Yeah. And she'll be at least have salvaged the situation. Do not... In an attempt to save two hundred dollars, spend like five thousand dollars in legal fees. Yeah, <laughs> now that makes sense. Okay, I'm going to turn my rant off. But no, um, no, I, I <laughs> thought it was very informative. I and I, I love that. You you should feel bad from beyond the grave. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so so yeah, so so she would go with the with the estate closing guy and say the wife can live in the, the or the mom can live in yeah. the house until she dies, and then it gets. The yeah, kids. does have this, does some of the lawyers do this one thing? Gotcha. Yeah. I have one more question. Let's say I'm a kid, I'm a minor, or maybe not even a minor. Let's say I'm 25, but uh, my my mother is, uh, you know, she's on, she has, she's has one of these lifetime Life things. Safe? Yeah, yeah. She gets to live there until she dies. Let's say she's like hoarding stuff and destroying the property, or she's you know having bonfires in the backyard that are slowly yes. deteriorating the property. Can I make some sort of claim to the court like, hey? Yeah. Yes, you can. So they can't destroy your interest. Okay. So they have an, the only person that the life interest hasn't, 
excuse me, an obligation to is the remainder interest. So in most states, if they're hoarding, if they're letting mold grow in the house, if they're not fixing the roof, if the house burns down, which is fine for house to burn down legally, but you have to have insurance to rebuild it. Yeah. But let's say she didn't. Let's say she didn't pay property insurance and he let the house burn down and the whole thing's gone. The remainder interests do have a legal claim they can bring for them destroying something that they have a vested interest in. Hmm. Um, okay. So there is some duty to at least the, – the general duty – to, in layman's term is is to keep the property more or less like how it was so don't make it worse um, if if she got the property and it's in reasonable condition maintain it and if they can't maintain it and everyone's over 25 they have to figure out what they're going to do either they can all get together and sell it and, and split the money between them somehow um, the life interest is less valuable than the remainder interest but um People can haggle a deal out and sell it if they can't come to terms with keeping it up to date. Or up to date, making sure there's no holes in the roof, make sure it doesn't burn down, make sure it's not mold, make yeah, sure there's no not hoarding. termites. And try, if you're going to hoard it, at least hoard it in an organized <laughs> way. Don't like hoard, <laughs> don't hoard cats. Like, don't like hoard like things that are like problematic. And I've been in <laughs> hoarding houses where there have been like, you can smell a dead animal, <laughs> and you don't know what it is, and it makes you want to barf. Yeah. And you have to wear those gas – not gas masks, like respirators to walk in. Steven, that's one of – I think that's it's one my of the night, most – It's a nightmare. It's something like nightmares are made of. Steven, that is one of the most on-brand things for you I think I've ever heard you say. If, if you're going to hoard stuff, make sure you hoard it in an organized way. Yes. You can hoard things. Have, like, your plastic containers. Get a storage unit. <laughs> Be organized about your hoarding. If you have, like – here are my old – two of my spoons. Have, like, at least an identifiable <laughs> – hub of my spoons I, so, I want to meet this person I want to meet this person that's like super organized left brain responsible in organization I am fascinated I've never met one before a lot, of hoarding, a lot of hoarding is shockingly an inability to make a decision exactly. and part of the decision is being unable to organize <laughs> so but I would love to meet that person I, that's amazing Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful or at least enjoyable um, listening to us um, rip apart the great legal questions from the depths of the internet. It would help us out if you could like, share, or leave a comment below this video. Also, if you want to protect your family through the estate planning process, please give us a call. Our direct number is 404-738-9538. And you can also leave us an email at the address below.